afternoon, everyone. Uh, by now, you would have had the review of uh, the 2019 federal election for the Labor Party. It goes without saying this was a deeply disappointing result for the Labor Party and its supporters. That's why the Labor Party wanted to undertake a comprehensive review, and we've done that. It's an honest appraisal of what uh, went wrong, and it's, it makes recommendations about how we can make a more persuasive offering to the people of this country. The truth is that um, our democracy is well served by a strong Labor Party. Having a, a Labor Party which is able to effectively articulate its values and policies and put a persuasive agenda for the people of Australia is a critical part of a successful functioning democracy. And we've always been and played a critical role in the development of our nation. Sadly for us, at uh, this election, uh, we presented uh, a public policy agenda uh, that paradoxically frightened the very people we were trying to support. Um, it was regarded as too complex, it was regarded uh, as not persuasive. Uh, what we have found is that there were three critical failings in the campaign. There was a, a weak strategy which didn't allow us to formulate an appropriate story to tell the people of Australia. Uh, there was a failure to adapt to the, the changing circumstances that we found with the, the new leader of the Liberal Party, Scott Morrison. Uh, and um, a contribution uh, was also made by uh, the unpopularity of our leader. These three factors uh, were critical uh, in our loss. What we've done is to make recommendations about improving these matters for the future. Uh, we've made remarks about the effect of various policies uh, on the election result. Um, we've described the electoral impact, if you like, of the, the cumulative effect of a series of policies which uh, created risk in the minds of the Australian community. What we haven't done is uh, make remarks or commentary on individual policies, except uh, with two exceptions. In the area of electoral reform, we found that um, a significant, although subordinate, part of the, the campaign was the campaign that was run by Clive Palmer and the money that was tipped into the last two weeks of the campaign. This is a serious threat to democracy, that, that one individual could have such a profound effect on the share of voice uh, of a major party in that way. And we do recommend uh, that there are spending caps in relation to uh, high net worth individuals who make contributions in election campaigns. We also saw um, uh, a, a death tax campaign which was based on lies but which was um, also made a small but important impact on the election campaign. Once again, we, we believe that uh, truth and advertising legislation should be promoted to address that question. The other area I want to address, um, while we don't make any particular commentary about the particular policies that exist in the area of climate change, we do make this observation. And the observation is that the Labor Party must continue to stand for strong action uh, on climate change. We believe that this is uh, a bedrock principle for the Labor Party and cannot be abandoned. Precisely what the policy should be is, of course, a matter for the, for the Federal Labor Party. Uh, and we also um, make some remarks about our values as a Labor Party. Um, we believe that as a Labor Party, we must continue to advance our agendas of working people and their job security, uh, and also making sure that we address the social justice issues, removal of all forms of discrimination, and of course care for our natural environment. Those principles uh, are not negotiable for the modern Labor Party. And what we need to do as a party is find a way of knitting the constituencies together, people who, working people who are concerned about their jobs and their security, and people who are concerned about those broader social justice issues. So we've made a series of recommendations uh, which are now being considered by the National Executive. The report has been released uh, for uh, public consideration today. Uh, 
We think this is important because we think that this is a conversation that uh, the, the Australian community is entitled to see the Labor Party have. Uh, thanks, Jay. I thought I'd open my brief remarks by uh, sharing with you the role of expectations in shaping the election campaign and the result. Uh, every opinion poll, every betting agency, uh, and I think both political parties, believed that Labor was going to win. And this actually influenced the way that Labor conducted itself, most particularly a very large and diverse range of groups uh, approached the Parliamentary Labor Party with proposed policies. Not necessarily on the basis of them being um, heavily promoted during the campaign, but they wanted to get in uh, and effectively were banking the win uh, to put to Labor, please accept our policy, um, knowing that if Labor did win, then after the election, there wouldn't be any more room uh, for that to happen. Uh, one consequence of that is that Labor had a very complex offering. Uh, a lot of policies, um, certainly well over 200, uh, some of them very small, but some of them large. So the consequence of that is that the spending program that was entailed and that necessitated the collection of revenue to fund it. Otherwise, you're in a situation of un unfunded promises. Uh, so that in the end, the Labor offering became very complex for particularly those voters who don't pay a lot of attention to politics. Uh, the coalition ran an effective campaign in that respect by saying that um, this is a very complex and uh, some sort of risk to the economy and therefore potentially to your jobs. The result of that is that um, when we did a statistical analysis, an internal one, uh, the group that swung clearly against Labor were low-income, economically insecure voters in outer urban and regional Australia. These are people that Labor would like to think are traditional Labor voters, but in fact they swung against Labor. Ironically too, they were the very people to whom Labor's policies were directed. That Labor wanted their support because Labor was putting policies that would benefit them. But it just became too complex and too cluttered. And as a result of that, people were fearful about what that might do. And that coalition, and might, I might add Clive Palmer, um, had a very well-funded campaign to stoke those fears. Um, obviously, Queensland uh, swung strongly against Labor, in part because it has quite a number of low-income, uh, insecure, outer urban and regional voters, but there might have been another factor there as well, and Labor obviously will have to do better in Queensland next time. Um, the Adani convoy uh, was, we believe, very damaging. It was not a Labor convoy, it was a Greens convoy, but there was this sense of confluence that because Labor cared about climate change, that this Adani convoy from the south, which Queenslanders do not like, um, was somehow um, saying to people that their jobs were not worthy. Uh, this is not a message that Labor had, but it, done, it did seem to converge onto that. Um, there were groups who swung to Labor, and they were high-income urban voters, uh, and they actually included people who would be affected or likely to be affected by the franking credit policy and the negative gearing policy. Um, those two policies did not of themselves cost Labor the election. They were there to fund, they were there to fund the, expend the expenditure program. And that's what became complex and in a sense a bit scary for those voters that I'm describing. Uh, so there you go, high income earners swing to Labor, low income earners swing away from Labor. Lessons to be learned in all of that. Uh, I'd draw your attention in particular to uh, the section of the report described as 500 words. Um, this uh, goes to some of the points that Ra Jay just raised. Um, we believe that it's important for Labor to maintain its conviction that there is human induced climate change 
and that it does um, continue to espouse policies that tackle climate change without necessarily cre creating such perceptions that it might adversely affect people. You know, in the era of climate change and renewable policy, Anthony Albanese just last week talked about the job opportunities associated with renewables, and we think that is the sort of direction uh, in which we should go. Um, in addition to that, we believe that Labor should increase public awareness of the cost of inaction on climate change, and I get a sense already that this is the debate that is really emerging. So if the Coalition feels that they can go to the next election um, basically saying climate change isn't such a big deal, well, that would actually be a good thing for Labor because we believe that uh, climate change will continue to be a very important issue in the coming three years and beyond.